Hey everyone, welcome back to Artist on Record, your ultimate intimate conversation with your favorite artist. And if it is your first time here, do me a favor, subscribe and hit that bell to be notified for any future episodes coming your way. In the hot seat from the legendary band, The Sweet, we have Mr. Andy Scott. Today we talk about their iconic song, Fox on the Run. The backstory and who is it really about? It all starts now. Don't touch that dial. I mean, Fox on the Run, it's a, it's a, like a, it's such an anthem song for you guys. But I got to ask you, Fox, it's a, it's about a band's groupie. Who was the girl? It was she was an unnamed groupie. Did she have a name? Was it anybody? It was anybody. It was anybody. It was a um, a, a piece of um, we. <laughs> Mick was a lad, you know, the drummer. Uh, he used to, we, we used to have this thing of, um, he would say to somebody, oh, I, I see you pulled a bird last night to somebody like in the um, in the crew or something. And he went, oh yeah, um, what was her name? And, and, and if they said the name, he went, <laughs> he said, you, you've got to take them up and not know their name, mate, and get them out of your room before breakfast, you know. <laughs> So, so that that's where I don't want to know your name came from, you know. And, and then in the morning, you don't look the same. There's another interesting thing that um, uh, I spotted. I was watching a um, a Red Hot Chili Peppers gig mm -hmm. on one of these late night things where they cut the, the gig down to about. 45, 50 minutes. And it came back on stage um, to do their encore. And what did they play? Fox on the Run. As an encore. And I was wow. going, wow. My son was impressed. See, you're already cool now to the kids because yeah. they were doing Fox. It's such a great yeah. song. Great song. Would you, do you remember writing when you guys were writing that song? What it, was well, it a I, wrote, I, I actually wrote the, the, the guts of it um, because um, it's been released on a, on a like one of these fan um, platinum rare type, you know, um, albums, you know, where where you where there's been some demos added at the end, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And you hear me. I'm almost whispering with an acoustic guitar singing. I don't want to know your name. And then la 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 la, and then, and because the words fitted, fox on the run, the la da fox. So it's it's that moment where you think I'm going to change that, and you never do. Fox on the run. Everybody said it's it sits lovely, you know, and then of course Steve uh, and Mick. Um, more so than Brian. Brian's songwriting skills were, were not his forte. He was the face. He was out front. He was the singer. Uh, and um, so some of the lyrics was kind of tidied up and Mick came up with some arrangement ideas, you know, and um, that's how we came together. It's the vocals are great. The layers, how it just goes on top and builds up. It's yeah. so big and epic. You don't yeah. hear that nowadays. Well, we, because of the amount of tracks that we had, probably 16 then, mm -hmm. um, to bounce down backing vocals and everything, everybody thinks that there was like queen type layers, you know, like eight yeah. or 12 or whatever. There's only four, you know, four generations of backing vocals. It's, um, but it sounds big and thick because. Um, I remember learning from Phil Wayneman, if they're too perfect, you need to add more. If they're not quite as perfect as they should be, you don't because they interact with each other and they sound thicker. And he said, by the time it gets cut onto vinyl, that will have all smoothed out nicely. And he was right. It's a, se it's a sexy song. It's a great yeah. song. Or, or you go down the other route mm -hmm. and like the Eagles have two perfect double tracks. Yes. That you can't tell the difference when you put the headphones on. That Absolutely. must take some doing. Absolutely. But it was such a magical album, song. I mean, those records from growing up and being a kid in the 70s, listening to the music, um, that album, 
also with ELO. Um, these are records that, you know, Queen, those three bands that I just named, you're part of it. Magical, colorful, yeah. these layers. Well, Jeff Lynn was working with very similar things that we were, and his editing is just out, out of this world. You know? You know, he he butts. Um, in other words, he must record in, get to that point, and then start again on a new piece of tape, mm. knowing that um, what he's going to put there, which he can't fit in there, is going to be maybe more orchestration, and then out he'll come back to this recording. Because you have to do it like that, otherwise there just aren't enough tracks, you know? No. There's an art to it. It there is. Was, there, it's, there was it's, an it's, art. It's fantastic. Why do you think um, um, the the, the uh, traveling Wilburys and George Harrison and um, uh, Tom Petty and uh, Roy Orbison and um, uh, uh, Bob Dylan? Why, why? Why do they want him in the studio with them? Fantastic. Fantastic. And, Je and Jeff got his dream. He got his dream come yeah. true. Well, I know? I met him. Uh, before I joined Sweet, he was in a band called um, The Way of... No, not The Way of Life. They, they were called... Um, oh, well, his band, before he, he joined up with... Um, before The Move? Roy Wood in, in The Move. Yeah. No, be, be, before The Move. Mm -hmm. They were a fantastic band th that he was in. But <laughs> I don't know how to put this, but my band, The Elastic Band, were local in Chester, a uh, place on the Welsh borders mm -hmm. and they come up from Birmingham. And what he actually said to us was, do you mind if we go on first? Because we've got to go back to Birmingham. And we went, well, if you square it with the promoter of the, 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 the club, yeah, no, no problem. Uh, and he said, I've got a football match in the morning and I've got, got to get some sleep. You know, this is a Saturday night. And he used to get up and play football on a Sunday morning wow. with somebody, you know, in, in a team. And it, it always stuck with me. And we, we met them a couple of times. We did a couple of universities with them. And they were, as I said, they were a great band. You know, the bass player and him were, were great singers, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Honestly. Yeah. 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 Well, I can imagine. I like to check that out and listen to it if there's something out there that I could, you know, find on YouTube. Yeah, I'm not sure whether they did any recording. It was one of those bands that... that that did gigs and everybody used to talk about them and you know uh it there were lots of bands like that that, that never quite you know hit it yeah. you know and and then um i when i heard that he joined the, the move with um uh with roy i then went wow this should be good but it didn't last it, it no. fell apart and then then there was um, uh, electric Light Orchestra. They retained the drummer, um, Bev. Uh, Bev, Bev, Bev. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, and then Roy didn't fancy staying there, so. Oh. No, he was almost like a and, Sid Barrett type guy, Roy. It seems like. Yeah, and then he, and then he. Well, of course, uh, he had a lot of success with Wizard. Wizard, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's all we have time for today. But if you want to catch this episode right now unedited, join our members only club. Plus, be there when we interview your favorite artist. Help me with the questions. And make sure you check out our podcast show. And please subscribe. Hit the bell to be notified for any future episodes your way. And if there's something you miss, click on the screen right here for something special. And post your comments down below. We always love to hear from you. As always, stay beautiful. And always remember, who loves you, baby? We do. We'll see you all later. Thanks for watching.